Hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld here in Montreal, Quebec. And we're speaking with Steve Struggle. Black Panther speaking with a Jewish Bundist. This is revolutionary. And here we go. Steve, what's going on with you now? I'm okay. How are you doing? What's going on? Lots, you know, but, you know, I want to get back to Palestine. You know, I want to take care of things here in Montreal, get my knees right. fixed up, and then, you know, fly away back into the revolution. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's so that sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. Me too. Now, you were, uh, you, you were uh, 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 keeping tabs on what's going on in Africa right now. There's... I sure have been. Uh, it's been an interesting few days. Um, well, there was a coup d'etat in Niger last week. And to make a very long story short, a U.S. backed, Western backed, what I call puppet regime, was overthrown by a group of, a group of generals from the army. The former president is under is under house arrest, and ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, and a bunch of other African lackey governments. Are all are all upset. They want the they want uh Blinken is upset. Macron is really pissed <laughs> because to, because today there were demonstrations outside the French embassy, and I think I think I think I think they actually may have, the masses may have torched the embassy. <laughs> so which you know to me is a good thing. Now here's uh you know people can say well cool is not a good thing it should be the masses in action. We don't know at this point. It's hard to tell what the what the coup leader's agenda is going to turn out to be. But to me, this is to me. If a U.S. puppet is overthrown and put out, if France's embassy is being torched, it's a it sounds like it's a good day in in um, Niger to me. Uh -huh. This country is very poor. And it seems like they're going to try to take it by force. It seems like Nigeria is the is the nearest country that's going to that is that's going to quote, invade next week to reestablish the government. Now, the U.S. government has its coups. Whenever the U.S. government wants a coup, it has a coup. Mm. When France wants a coup, it has a coup, mm -hmm. and nobody says nothing about it. It's it's all it's fine. Yeah. But when somebody else has a coup. Oh no, we want elections. Oh no, the rule of law. Oh no, we want this good governance. Oh no, we can't have this. It's yeah. all a bunch of nonsense to me. Yeah. So, in my view, right now, if the French embassy is burning, let it burn to the ground. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Burn you and and see there, but also there are U.S. troops in my, in Niger fighting Al Qaeda and fighting Islamic State. U.S. troops, get out. Yeah. Get out the country. Yeah. German troops, get out and let the people handle their own affairs. Yeah. This is nothing but imperialist meddling of colonial and former colonial powers mm. in a poor African countries with, with uh, uranium in it. So, I, you know, mm. people say the workers don't have any interest in this coup. Well, we'll see. Mm. But the U.S. puppet is, is out right now. And that's yeah. a good thing. All, all, they want, all they want are their puppets in power. Yeah, that's right not on. that's not democracy. So that's how I feel about it. You know, then a story came out about Oppenheimer, this big movie Oppenheimer, but this guy who de who developed the, the uh, uh, atomic bomb, and I just sent you the link a couple a couple hours ago. Yeah, about how Africans were working to mine uranium with no protection. Yeah, and they knew it was then the people knew it was dangerous. Yeah, so maybe. If civil society gets off its behind, we get reparations. But this is a current movie, a current story, again, focused on Africa. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's a lot happening in Africa, but I, I want to put my unequivocal, unequivocal support for the, for the coup, not because I like the coup leaders, because the U.S. puppet is out. Yeah. They need to all be gut with. And 
with a, and, and we'll see what happens this week. Yeah. Do you know because, the name of the uh, the coup leader, the one that is a spokesperson yeah, now? Or? I didn't give me his. I was trying to get it before we started. Yeah, I think we should know his name. You know, because he yeah, appeared yeah. at the uh, Saint he, Petersburg, he uh, uh, Russia, Africa conference. Oh, that he did. Place. I, I did not and, know. You know, that. like he, he was dressed uh, you know, like a like a African Che Guevara. You know, and he was talking like you know uh, a socialist and everything. So I'm very in, intrigued, you know, by this. You know, because. You know, that's how the Libyan revolution started with Colonel Gaddafi, you know, doing a coup that only resulted in one casualty. And, uh, and, and you know, it took off from there, except he didn't finish it. And there was no constitutional assembly, no constitution that was, you know, made to replace the, uh, the previous king's constitution. And so it fell apart. But this, you know, is a very interesting, you know, uh, coup d'etat. And uh, we can certainly look forward to what's going to be happening as a result. Well, let, let's see the jump. Uh, let me get the name. Okay. Abdurham Shani. Yeah. Shiani. Yeah. And the group that, that they've called themselves the, let's see here, National Council for Safeguard of, of the Homeland. There's oh. always some issues about these names. Yeah. Um, and he wears a red beret. That's oh nice. no 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 that that's that's a gentleman from uh, yeah I saw him at at the at the at the African summit and that's something else that's something else to talk about the African summit is something else to talk about but yeah. let's let's see if we can get his name because I okay. saw his image I, I know exactly who you're talking about um yeah I mean it we this something we should have planned for before we got this. And um, I thought that Mr. Uh, Mr. Pergosian's comments were quite uh, astute at, 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 at the African summit. He basically was saying Africa wants to get, get Africa wants to get rid of the of the um, uh, colonizers. Yeah. I thought Mr. Pergosian was correct about that. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this guy. Man. I'm sorry. We should probably yeah. cut this part. South Africa spoke also, you know, to accept. Uh, you know, extending its fraternal greetings to uh, Russia in the name of the president and saying that they were in favor of a multipolar world and they had no uh, interest in following the dictates of the United States of America and they refused to boycott Russia and that they will continue to work with Russia. And uh, But they're not turning against the United States necessarily, and they say so. So they're not uh, declaring themselves to be a you know revolutionary government or anything, but they're uh, still... Uh, rejecting the uh, monopolization of the U.S. power over Africans. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, and I think it's about time somebody does that. Yeah. Because this is, this this whole thing in Africa with the United States and France and Germany attempting to re, re, rewrite history to deny that there are colonial powers. This yeah. is just, this is absurd. This yeah. is just absurd. And these African governments, these governments like in Chad, like in Kenya, like I mean, I can I can name them. Like in Ghana, there was something I read where there was a meeting somewhere, and the president of Ghana accused another president of of being a friend of Russia. Mm. I just imagine such a thing. Mm. You're in a meeting of government heads of state, and some clown speaks the U.S script against you in a meeting yeah <laughs> i mean we're really showing what who these people really that's why i say let's call them regimes and clowns and puppets stop mm. calling them presidents because <laughs> they represent nobody but standard oil yeah. and the um the banks the mining interests those who want to steal the fish off off the ocean mm. all the imf loans they're paying back all the world bank money they're getting this is just putting africa more and more in debt China and Russia at this point have a better plan. Just take that plan and run with it. Mm. Why do anything else? You're just mm. stupid. Yeah. Whatever yeah. money they're making, they're going to make it anyway. So yeah. just the hell with it. Just go on and get off the U.S. program. Yeah. U.S., France, Germany, this has got to go. Yeah, yeah. It just sucks. Yeah. I, I'm I sorry. think Russia it's... is doing better than even China in Africa, you know, because they're offering free tuition and studies, you know, university studies, you I know, saw, for Africa. I saw that. I saw yeah. that. China's not doing that. You know, China's not sort of developing the independence of Africa. 
you know, China is, you know, developing Africa so that they can have access to African markets and resources. Okay, fine. You know, it's doing better than the United States. But Russia's even, you know, offering in addition to that development, you know, the intellectual development of Africa as well. So yeah, I, I, I why think not? there's something going on. I think I think there's something going on there because I I I also saw that the um offering offering right now there are a lot of uh, Russian stu students in Russia, and they're going to open up some some schools, some universities in Africa. Uh, this is pretty good. I mean, wow. come on. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, this is this shows me you you're, that you think the people of the country have potential that you will go there. And someone I read on the internet, someone said a commentator said, "Wow, that's interesting." You're saying no other no countries no countries have done it before. And the answer is no, no. So yeah, it's just um, I don't know. I think it's something to to consider actually because I, I just don't know what to say. Um, there's a lot. It's just a lot happening yeah. in Africa right now, and this coup and the Africa summit, and it's a lot of things that are happening. You know, I just don't know what to say because the U.S. is trying to run the program but yeah there were nine uh, african countries that were represented at the conference in st petersburg formerly leningrad of course yeah. and uh so that's nine major african countries and so they are showing the way you know for the rest of africa and uh the uh, the uh um I lost my train of thought there because I was so impressed, you know, with the conference. I was following it, you know, on Russia Today. And I'm impressed by Putin to a certain extent as well in that he knew how to speak to Africa. And he sure did, was there he? as well, the foreign minister. Oh. You know? So it's a, like a strategic orientation that they're making to Africa and well. bringing Africa into the whole third world revolution that they seem to be involved in now, you know, together with China. So and, it's a and major it seemed, step. It seems like the fact that they're even wanting to make a movement to put another, put an African country on on the um, UN Security, Security Council. Council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, okay, in real terms, that may mean nothing, but in real terms, that does mean something. Yeah. It depends like on the like, speaker, like, you know. Like, like, it, like it or not, in terms of geopolitical influence, membership on the Security Council of the United Nations is an indication that you are a world power. Yeah. Period. You just can't get around that, right? Right. Right. And that means they have a veto. A permanent member of the Security Council has a veto. A veto. Yeah. A veto. And it probably... I would think it probably would be South Africa. Uh -huh. It's got to be South Africa, um, Nigeria. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I doubt it would be Angola. It won't be Mozambique. You know, yeah. I'm just thinking what country it might be. Yeah. Um, but it probably be South Africa. Yeah, that would be better than That's, Nigeria. Nigeria, I think, is yeah. an American client state. Yeah, it, it is. It's, uh, there's so many states that just client states of the West. It's, it's just despicable. Yeah. And um, yeah. But uh, anyway, I was looking for the, I found Prigozhin's statement. It's a very good statement. Um, I, I didn't like the fact that, I think the fact that in the United States, we don't get Russia today anymore is banned. It's a, it's a banned station. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people have trouble even keeping up with the real news of the world. Yeah. But because I use Telegram and I have my own Telegram channel and I just I just aggregate things that I, I want to see or talk or keep a record of. Yeah. That's how I knew about the Africa Summit. Uh -huh. I I had no it's not in the news. No. <laughs> no. no way. Yeah. No, I mean it's, it's not even it doesn't even exist yeah. in, in the news. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. just hoping that I'm hoping that um I hope that whatever is going to happen in 
Niger can be worked out peacefully. Yeah. Um, I, but I, I, again, and this could just be an act of desperation by a, a group of officers who see what's going on. Um, there's a very interesting vi video of the Nigerian foreign min uh, finance minister. He's crying. He's in tears. And what happened was, according to the story, he was told he had 24 hours to, to explain where, where, where's, where's all, all the money being spent mm -hmm. or, or he's going to be shot. <laughs> well, well, that's one that, way of doing that, it. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I, I, hey, you know, you know, I mean, again, sometimes you have to just say, look, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. And he, he was like, I, I, if I were him, I'd be getting up all the information right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I would hold nothing. I, I put all the documents yeah. on the table. Here you go. Yeah, really. You know, that because, would be a wise career move. You know. Yeah, because yeah. At, at this point, what may, what happens next week? Who knows what's going to happen next week? Mm -hmm. I think he has. A, I think he has a, a day or two to to give up the information because mm -hmm. apparently. These guys apparently they're stealing money, man. You know these, you know how these these uh, Marcos types are, right? Marcos mm. type, um, uh, uh, Mobutu, Sesi Seko, you know all these this corrupt, these corrupt demagogues at the U.S. and France and Germany and um, the U.K. Oh, the U.K. They they have so much blood on their hands it goes up to their shoulders, not the elbow. It goes mm. up to the neck. Mm. The, the UK's blood is up to here, okay? Mm. So all of them, these, these leaders, they rape, they, rape, they rape the country, they steal the resources, and then they just, they, they, then they just take off and go live somewhere, mm. uh, you know, mm. when, when, when it's time to go. Mm. So I, if, 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 if I were the finance minister of um, Niger, I'd be getting up the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm. it says some that they... <laughs> that they that they, that they threaten him with death unless you give up the information. I, I'm sorry to laugh. Because yeah. how, how how often does this happen? Yeah. That these that these clowns who've been stealing, uh -huh. looting, you know they've been ripping the people off. You know this. Yeah. That's how they run these places, man. Come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what they run it. Do they run it like that, man? They yeah. lie, cheat, steal, yeah. rape, pillage. Yeah. Put the money in foreign bank accounts and cryptocurrency. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Well, and uh, their their uh, capital sponsors, you know, who lend them the money in the first place, like the IMF, they don't care, you know, because they just want, you know, a, a national bourgeoisie to take root, you know, and, and grow and keep control of the country. That's it doesn't matter, you know, how it's want. done, as long as it's done, you know, that way. You know, and I, I can't I can't see why people, especially some leftists, can't see that. Yeah, we can't support the coup. Why yeah. not? I oh, mean, well. Okay. Oh, let me. Let's say they lose next week, and Nigeria comes in and wipes everybody out. That might happen. Yeah. But for now, they got a little power. Give them a couple. Of give them a week. To have, <laughs> give them yeah. a week to put and and let and let the people burn the embassies. Yeah. So what? And France said, if you harm our people, if you harm our interests, we're going to retaliate. Yeah. See, they they can threaten people, and nobody says nothing to France. Yeah, they don't say a damn thing to them, do they? No. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. whatever they want. France yeah. can say whatever wants in Africa, and uh -huh. doesn't aren't aren't many countries being forced back to give France money? It's some kind of weird payback they got. They're giving France money, and they have this weird ass French francophone money system they have. It's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. 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 There's like about five yeah. different, you know, former French colonies that are somehow obliged to use this uh, French currency, even though France uses a euro. <laughs> I wonder if Niger is part of that. That'd be a nice research. That'd be a nice research project, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. So. That's it for me. In my area of work, it's it's bizarre. You know, it's totally bizarre. You know what's happening in uh, occupied Palestine. You know, this uh, Israeli Zionist regime is a joke. You know, they they haven't even been able to uh, even write a constitution. 
And then this new <laughs> amendment that they passed, you know, amendment to the basic law, uh, you know, there's like, they have one paragraph, you know, establishing a Supreme Court. And they're going, they want to amend this paragraph to say that the Supreme Court can't decide. You know, like, what's the point of having a Supreme Court if it can't decide, you know, for itself? Yeah, it's what yeah, it thinks really. about, you know, the law that is being passed by the Parliament, Knesset. You know, if it can't, you know, have, you know, a say in whether or not a given law is, uh, uh, you know, legal, then who's going to say? Nobody. That means, you know, the Knesset, with their flimsy little right-wing, you know, coalition, is going to do whatever it wants. They could, you know, pass a law to abolish elections, for instance. Yeah, you know, for instance. All of a sudden, the Supreme Court, Supreme Court is not allowed to tell them that they can't do that. You know, is that what the game is all about? You know, like, so they had second reading and they passed it on second reading. On third reading, you know, it's going to become law. Then it goes to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is going to think, you know, like, how come, you know, we're supposed to, you know, like accept a law that abolishes the Supreme Court? You know, like this is, you know, untenable. No. You know, like it can't be no, done. Do that. Not do that. So yeah. the Supreme Court, you know, cannot accept such a amendment, you know, to the basic law. And right. yet they may, you know, pressure some Supreme Court judges, you know, to accept it. If they do, then, you know, they're finished. You know, then they sure are. Yeah. But if they don't accept it and they send the ball back, you know, to the Knesset, like what's the Knesset going to do? They're going to pass another law overruling the Supreme Court? Well, that law has to go to the Supreme Court as well, you know? Yeah. I, <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, you know I, this whole thing with these Supreme Courts, um, you know, in the United States, there have been some very repressive and conservative Supreme Court rulings recently taking away a lot of rights people have, were given by the Supreme Court. And it's made me wonder, really, when will it come to a time when that can't happen? Because right now, the, the Supreme Courts give and they take away, and, and people's rights are not maintained. It's just kind of interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the demonstrations, you know, like in 114, you know, Israeli uh, cities and, and towns, you know, happening at the same time. But I don't think they've got it together. You know, like, okay, they've got a lot of people out there. But who are these people? Mainly, you know, the Ashkenazim, you know, like European, you know, Jewish Israelis, who are trained, you know, to believe in democracy, you know, even if it's a liberal democracy. So they're out there, you know, to oppose the right wing, because they know that the right wing is going to uh, crash and burn the whole project. And uh, and they're losing their international connections and their international support, even support from the United States of America. So, you know, the the so-called left Zionists, who aren't leftists, Ashkenazim, are out there, you know, protesting. But the government is ignoring them and just sending out, you know, the water trucks, you know, the police, you know, to hose them down. Okay. So how come they haven't been able to, you know, build a United Front, you know, that is powerful enough to stop, you know, the government from doing this. Even, you know, they even have support, you know, from, you know, fighter pilots and reserve, you know, uh, volunteers uh, who are refusing service and, uh, and uh, you know, the, uh, the high-tech sector are threatening to pull out of, you know, Israel and go to California. And there's uh, others, you know, who are advocating that people withdraw all their money from the banks and, you know, to, to kill the banks as well, you know, in protest. Okay, but it's not working. Why? Okay, two reasons. One, the Jewish Arab population of the Israelis, who are this called the Mizrahim from North Africa, who came there looking for a better life because they got discriminated against, you know, in North Africa, you know, by the theocratic Muslim laws. Okay, so they come to Israel and they think they're going to make it. They end up, you know, being, you know, the lower class, you know, like, cheap labor of the Ashkenazim, you know, working class and national bourgeoisie. So what kind of a program, what kind of an approach do they have, you know, to the Mizrahim? Are they inviting them in to come into this, you know, and, and expand, you know, the protests, you know, to include a program that will eliminate, you know, discrimination against the Mizrahim? No. No, they're ignoring the Mizrahim. Mizrahim ignore them in, in return, you know, so they don't come out. If the Mizrahim came out, the demonstrations would be twice as big because the Mizrahim Arab Jewish population of the Israelis is 50% of the population. And they're being, you know, ignored. 
Okay, well, you know, that's not good, you know, for United Front building. Secondly, 20%, 23% of the Israeli citizen population are Palestinians and Druze, you know, Arab populations. Are they inviting them in? Are they allowing them to come with their Palestinian flags? No, no. Do they get to speak at the demonstrations? No. Again, a big failure. Two strategic failures in this movement, which leaves them isolated, and the right-wing coalition couldn't care less because they didn't vote for them in the first place. So, you know, why would they, you know, cater to their protests? No way. They don't have to. So they're going to fail. This law is going to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is going to be put into a very difficult position. And then we can see, you know, like, this is just the beginning of it all, you know, like, because after this amendment, you know, that, uh, you know, basically neuters the Supreme Court, then they've got a whole bunch of other laws, you know, lined up, you know, to pass there that the Supreme Court, you know, wouldn't accept in the first place. But once they get rid of the Supreme Court, you know, uh, trial of reasonableness, then they're going to come in with their other laws. Now, another thing that they've done, uh, the, the right wing, you know, United Front is very strategic because they've got, you know, the religious parties in there, which are not even Zionist. They're non-Zionist. Okay, they're not anti-Zionist, but they're non-Zionist. What does that mean? That they don't support sending their children to go and fight in the Israel military. They will not support that because they want to send their children, the boys, you know, to yeshiva and the girls, you know, to get married as, as young as possible, to have as many children as possible. And this strategy has worked well, you know, because they've mushroomed, you know, in the number of, you know, uh, members that they have in the uh, in Israeli community. So they just want to continue along those lines, you know, to get more and more power. And they want the subsidies as well, you know, for, for their schools, you know, for their households, you know, for their children and everything like that. And they want the exemption from military service. Now, the big protests, you know, they're saying, oh, this is not fair. They're actually, you know, cutting themselves off from the religious, you know, uh, communities, which is a third strategic error because they're saying that they want them to go into the military. Instead of saying, you know, let's get rid of conscription because we don't need it. You know, who's going to threaten Israel anyway? You know, what do they need conscription for? For the occupation, of course to back up the occupation and to back up the uh, squatters there. Well, you know, like, why don't they get rid of the uh, conscription? It means they have to stop the occupation, but they don't talk about the occupation. It's not a subject for discussion. So they're going to kill themselves for that reason as well. So the right wing is winning in this battle, even though they've lost, you know, the majority of the popular support. If there was an election now, they wouldn't have a majority anymore. You know, they have 64 seats and they need 53, 52 to have a majority. You know, if there was an election now, they'd be getting 50, uh, they would be getting uh, 48. Yeah, that's what I saw. They would be getting 48 seats. And and the, and the left-wing uh, United Front, together with the Palestinian parties, would have about 54. And so they would stop the right-wing in their tracks. But right now, you know, the right-wing coalition is not going to allow themselves to be defeated. They're going to push, you know, for everything they can get, you know, while they have a mandate, you know, to pass the laws. And they're going to, you know, pass whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, if it gets, you know, really bad, you know, because there can be a civil war over all of this. I even saw, you know, some right-wing Zionist drive his car through a demonstration of the protesters, throwing three people into the air, and it wasn't even covered in the news. It was just, you know, like a video that I got on TikTok through through uh, Twitter, as it's still called. <laughs> and, you know, there's this civil war breaking out there. Now, if there's a civil war, this government can say, oh, you know, we've got to implement martial law, bring the army in to stop, you know, the two sides from fighting for the, for the good of the nation. <laughs> well, once there's martial law, there's no more elections, just like Zelensky, you know, said in in Ukraine, there's martial law, so we can't have any election. You know, the next election is canceled until martial law is finished. When's martial law to be ended? Oh, you know, like, and, and when the war is ended. And are they willing to negotiate an end to the war? No. <laughs> so same thing, you know. You know, Ukraine is now like, you know, like another, you know, like Zionist state. <laughs> and, uh, of course, they're being allied together. So... This is, you know, a disaster. 
And this may bring down, you know, Israel, because if the Palestinians get it together, you know, between the West Bank, you know, Gaza, and the Palestinians inside of, you know, like 48, you know, Palestine, then they would have something, you know, like going. And then they would be able to have, you know, the weight in order to speak, you know, to the Israeli opposition, say, you want our support? Then give us a program and let us come to the demonstrations with a Palestine flag. And then, you know, we can talk about, you know, bringing down this government. Otherwise, you know, they're going to lose. There has to be a united front strategy on both sides. And they're not making it. Yeah, so it's... Uh... Okay, so it's all to, going to degenerate until there's, you know, a revolutionary alternative, you know, that's developed somehow, somewhere. And, uh, you know, this is just, you know, pre-revolutionary conditions. We're not, you know, anywhere close to the revolution yet, but... No. But, you know, as, as long as there's struggle, there's hope. And I, 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 I was telling somebody a few weeks ago when they had the initial upsurge I think it was in 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 L. I think it was in Gaza. Um, some Palestinian groups have gotten together and did some did some offensive actions. I was telling somebody in the United States, it seems to me if things are changing, that there are a group of young Palestinians and Arabs in general who aren't scared of the Israelis. Yeah. And we and we and when you're not scared when you're not scared of your enemy, it changes the dynamic of the fight. Yeah. You still might lose. You might get wiped out, but it's a different fight. We're not scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's important. Not, it's important to not be scared. Yeah, uh, at least in the West Bank, you know, the different uh, political parties have formed a united front. They have a uh, um, uh, popular resistance committees. Hmm? There you go. And it doesn't matter what party they are. You know, they don't even right. talk about what party they are members of. You know, they're just working together. You know, on the on the issues of the day, and 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 they and this is becoming, you know, more powerful than any of the parties there. <laughs> right. So, right. Well, you know, well, like the, well, the you know, that's uh, important. Benin Brigade and the Nablus Brigade. You know, fighters. Yes. They come right. from various parties. They're not just one party. You know, like it was right. before. You know, so, you know, people, you know, will rally behind that because they know that the actions, you know. Of this group is not in favor of building, you know, the 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 uh, the image or the credibility of one party. It is for you know all of the people that they are fighting, so the people were supported. But well, I'm all for that, brother. I I and I I I have complete solidarity with them, hundred yeah. percent solidarity. Yeah. I wish I was there, you know, to help out. Yeah. Right. Well, we have, we have to do whatever we can from wherever we are yeah. until we can get to where we want to be. Yeah, okay. I like that. That sounds that's like a wrap right. there, you know. Well, that's what you gotta do. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't mind being in in Niger or or in in Burkina Faso right now. Yeah, that's where the action is. That's where the action is, man. Sometimes yeah. you gotta be where the action. You just gotta just take the risk. Oh well, yeah. do what I can. But it says I'm not there. I'm gonna do what I can from here. Yeah, that's it. You know, if Nigeria does invade Niger and tries to overthrow this uh, coup revolution then uh, they should, you know, ask for uh, international volunteers like the international brigades, you know, in the Spanish Civil War to come over, you know, like and help out and stop, you know, you know, the uh, U.S. client agents, you know, from Nigeria coming in there and massacring, you know, all the revolutionaries, which is what they would do. So, you know, perhaps this can become a, you know, big thing. Yeah. Well, let's let, like I said, I hope it does because we got to stop. We just got to put our foot down, say you, these puppet regimes cannot just steal the money, plunder, give us all these IMF loans and work and world and World Bank aid projects, and and it's in essence turning the country over to the um to to the foreign monopolies. Mm. This has just got to stop. Mm -hmm. It's and, and all of the your anti coup, any the only coups you don't like are the ones that that the leaders are not controlled by you. It's the only mm -hmm. coups you don't like. The ones that you the ones the leaders are controlled by you, you don't even care. Oh well, whatever. Great. Yeah. Democracy mm -hmm. is one, you know, that's what they say. Yeah. Okay, yeah. man. Well, this is a very good conversation. Thank you for the time. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, we only have a few minutes left, you know. So um uh to wrap up, uh I can refer to the progress that's been made, you know. The uh the Jewish Bundist uh, martyrs, you know, from Phoenix, Arizona of 2019, all of their writings, you know, are now been compiled into two books. 
And the title of the book is The Manual of Revolution. The first book is coming out within 767 pages. It's All been right. published, you know, by a uh, regular publisher, you oh. know, has accepted it for publishing. And it's going to be plastered all over the place. And then the um, the remaining writings, you know, which are numerous, you know, it's incredible. These people were, you know, like all brilliant writers, uh, you know, that's going to be a, a book two of the Manual of Revolution. And it's all ready. You know, I've completed it after getting the uh, files, you know, just uh, just the spring. So uh, that work is accomplished and it's going to be out soon. And the drafts are already on the academia.edu site of my name. So, uh, you know, we're moving ahead. So great to speak with you again, Steve. And, uh, you know, we'll come together next week again, right? Yeah, man. Okay, here we go. Off. Off and on away. <laughs>